Good morning. It's Jeffrey Christian of CPM Group. It's about 1035 uh, in the morning on Tuesday, the 13th of June here in New York. Gold is testing around 1960, breaking a little bit below that. Silver is breaking a little bit below $24 right now. I want to talk a little bit about what's going on here uh, with the markets. It's really sort of what we've been saying. Gold and silver have been treading water since they recovered. You know, they fell sharply in March, uh, and then they recovered sharply in April, um, partly on concerns about the debt ceiling discussions and, and political shenanigans uh, between the administration and Congress the United States. Uh, but since that recovering, they've basically been treading waters. Gold has been trading between, say, 1970 and $2,000, uh, trying to break above or below that. And gold and silver has been, I guess, as low as about 22 something, 2280 maybe, and uh, about 2640, 2645 on the high side. And um, they're sort of stuck in this sargasso sea of, of waiting uh, for direction from uh, things. And Issues have come up that have been positive for gold and silver and negative for gold and silver. And I, I want to talk a little bit about some of them today. Uh, primarily, I guess I'll talk about inflation because the May U.S. CPI figures came out. And as those of you who have listened to these in the past know, we like to look at month-to-month -month changes because that tells you what's actually happened in May as opposed to the year-over-year -year changes. The year-over-year -year changes are important, partly because that's what people look at, uh, but the month-to-month -month changes tell you what's happening now, not what the some results of the last 12 months are. And you can see, you know, we've, we were down at 0.1% for um, all urban uh, um, CPI price changes in May. And that was similar to March. We had had a spike up in April, uh, but we're there. And you can see this compares to, say, May and June of last year when we had much higher inflation. I want to put this into a longer term perspective. Here you can see the month to month changes. Really, I took it back to about 2010 or so. And you can see what the definition of a transitory spike in inflation actually is, not what the mouths on the internet said it would be or thought it would be. Uh, you can see how inflation really picked up. It was in this band for most of the period of time over the last 10, 12 years. In early 2021, as the U.S. and the world were coming out of the 2020 lockdown, you saw inflation start to rise above 0.2%, 2% on a year-over-year -year basis um, in March and April of 2021. Rose very sharply into the middle part of 2022. And since that time, it's been coming down. And it's back in that band that we've seen for most of the period of time from, say, 2010 to 2020. Um, if you do want to look at it on a year-over-year -year basis, these are the da uh, data points that were released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics this, uh, uh, today, this morning. And you can see that the all items, which include the more volatile food and energy, actually fell sharply and was down to about 4% uh, in May. Uh, <clears throat> the all items excluding the more volatile food and energy continued to decline, but was much higher and was a much more modest decline uh, around 5.3%. Now, if you break it down and you look at the components, what you see <clears throat> is that energy prices, specifically petroleum products, gasoline and heating oil, fell sharply in May. Part of that seasonal uh, the end of the winter heating uh, period that uses a lot of fuel oil in the Northern Hemisphere. Part of it is more fundamental 
uh, ample supplies of petroleum and petroleum products around the world, even though OPEC has announced a couple uh, significant cuts in its output, the more oil market has been very well supplied. So if you look at this and you disaggregate it, what you see is the biggest declines were actually in petroleum products in May. Food prices actually stayed high uh, and continue to be high, both food bought for consumption in the home and food bought in restaurants. Uh, the There are a number of issues with uh, food supplies, not supply chain so much as food supplies, uh, bad weather in various growing areas that have caused those issues. Excluding food and energy, you saw some modest uh, decline in the rate of increase, but it's still high. And most of the increase in core inflation has been in transportation, which has been a problem for some time, and shelter which has also been a problem for some time. And those are going to continue to be problems. So inflation is going to hang higher. It's not going to get down to 2% on an all items basis or on a X food and energy basis this year, we don't think. Uh, it's going to remain problematic, but it is not as problematic as a lot of people would have you believe, at least gold and silver promoters and doomsday sayers. This is a longer view of the year-over-year -year changes in CPI. And again, you can see the band in which year-over-year uh, -year changes in CPI existed for most of the period from 2010 to 2020. Uh, and then in 2021, we started to see it rise and it's been coming down. It's still not back to that band, uh, but you can see the direction. There are a variety of other factors I want to talk about. Today and tomorrow, the Federal Reserve Board's Open Market Committee are meeting. Uh, it's interesting because there's like a 96.5%. If you look at the Treasury's uh, market that trades on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, or the CME, uh, and you, you say, what does the market seem to be anticipating interest rates are uh, going to do? There's about a 96% uh, probability based on the way uh, the markets are trading that there will be no increase in the Fed funds rate tomorrow when the Fed makes its announcement. That dovetails in with what we saw in Australia and Canada last week. It dovetails in with the fact that the People's Bank of China has decreased its uh, primary lending rate uh, today. Uh, and it dovetails with expectations for Europe and the Bank of England. You are seeing some pulling back from the tightening because the inflation figures are showing reductions and because you are seeing pockets of weakness increasing around the world in terms of real economic activity. Haven't been thrown into a recession or a depression uh, yet, but it is moving that way. Going back to the CMC, CME's Fed Watch and the way the uh, treasuries are trading there, there's about a 60% probability based on the way the markets are trading that the, mar the market expects, about 60% of the market expects that you see another 25 basis point increase in the interest rate in the July FOMC meeting. And then it stays high but starts declining in 25 basis point uh, increments in November and December. That's predicated on the view that you will have a much slower economy by the fourth quarter and that concerns about moving into a recession will be increasing uh, with the po possibility of a recession emerging in 2024 or 2025. Political issues are obviously important. 2024 is an important year. There are reductions in cooperation and uh, what we would call perhaps ethical behavior, uh, both on a national level within the U.S. Uh, uh, political system and on a global basis. And global tensions are rising. The dollar is not collapsing. I'll say that again and again and again. 
Also, there hasn't been that great reset that some people have been trying to scare investors to buy gold and silver because there's going to be a great reset and they're going to call in the currencies. The dollar will be worthless. Other currencies will be worthless. You've got to own gold and silver now, now, now. That great reset hasn't occurred and it won't because there's no such thing that exists outside the realm of the gold and silver promoters. Also, there's no grand scheme on the part of BRICS governments to replace the dollar or to issue a currency, a new currency, or to tie their currencies together with the ruble. And there's been a lack of liquidity in other currencies that has limited their use in international trade settlements and capital flows. And those trends, that trend is going to continue. So the dollar, you can see here, this takes the dollar back. We've gone back to, what, 2007, uh, 2018 uh, here. And you can see that the dollar has not collapsed over the last five years, despite repeated calls that it was going to happen. Yeah, so the outrageous nonsense that uh, the promoters have been saying continues. And in fact, the shrillness of their prognostications seems to have picked up in recent weeks, partly perhaps because the global economy, the U.S. economy, inflation, interest rates, the dollar, gold and silver prices, none of them are moving in the direction that supports these theses. And, you know, if the previous administration taught us anything, it's that if you say something loud enough and often enough, people will believe it. So it could be that the promoters are feeling a little bit desperate. Uh, it could also be that the promoters are a little bit concerned about increased regulatory oversight of the way they market precious metals. It's hard to say. But one thing I've learned in the 40 some odd years that I've been following precious metals is you will never get rid of those people. They will always be in the market telling investors that they should be afraid of the dollar and the collapse of civilization and everything else imaginable. And, you know, like cockroaches in a New York City apartment, you're just not going to get rid of them. Next Tuesday, we won't do a video. We'll do a video on Friday, most likely of this week. But next Tuesday, we won't do a video, I don't think, because... On the 21st, we're going to be doing our question and answer, open uh, question and answer for our paying clients. And that's a period of time, one hour, two hours, however long uh, it goes, where people can ask us questions about things ranging from gold and silver to platinum and palladium to uranium and molybdenum and electric vehicles. Uh, and we'll answer the questions that we feel comfortable answering. You can go to our website. You can buy some of our research. You can sign up to participate uh, in next week's open forum, uh, and you can see a lot of free reads and videos. I'll talk to you on Friday. Take care of yourself.